Good morning, it is Wednesday, April 8th, and welcome to your uh, tutorial on how to do and turn some of your 3D models into some technical drawings. Um, if you're doing this, you're probably in the robotics introductory class, you're working through Nelson Mandela's Lab Under the Stairs program, and uh, you've probably got a Lego brick in front of you, something similar to what I have here in Autodesk uh, Inventor 2018. If you got 2020, don't worry. All the buttons are pretty much in the same place, they all look the same. Not much has changed in the last two years on this one. Now, congrats on getting this far, following some of the tutorials and actually getting a Lego brick that actually looks proper. And I'm a big fan, if I go to my view menu, of actually messing around with this and turning this to with edges so I can see what I'm looking at. But that's not what today's about. Today's about using Inventor and or Fusion 360, we're going to go through both, to turn this into a technical drawing. Now, why would you want a technical drawing? This is a perfectly good 3D model right here. One of the reasons we want to turn this into a technical drawing is so that somebody could go ahead and produce this. And in this case, it would be a mold for plastic injection molding, but it may be that you have a robot part that needs to be machined, it needs to be drilled, it needs to be cut, it needs to be modified in some way. And giving instructions to somebody who's actually going to do that work is one of the key problems in engineering, and especially in robotics. So we're going to turn this into a technical drawing using what you've already learned about, in, uh, about isometric and orthographic drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our 3D model tab and we're actually going to take this brick and we're going to create a brand new file. Right now this is an IPT file, an inventor part file. We are going to actually create a new drawing file. Now you'll notice that the DWG is the actual name for this and that's the same file format that you had in AutoCAD. It's going to create a very similar thing to what you were doing in 2D AutoCAD when drawing something like this in isometric and orthographic. Now before I do this next step I have to warn you this is something where I would, uh, if you spend a lot of time drawing the servo motor in isometric, you're going to be a little bit upset because what we're going to do here is we're actually going to create that object that we were just looking at on this blank paper space. If we go up to our base button here, the base is going to place our initial file on here. Now you'll notice that I get a little window here, and the window says component. We're going to, yes, we're going to create a component, and it asks you to identify what the component is. In this case, we're actually going to go find the file, and I've already found the file. It was the last thing I had open. Autodesk will kind of try to guess what you had last, and in this case, that's a good thing. Otherwise, you can actually click the search, and you can try to go find it in whatever it is you happen to have uh, available. Now, if we look down here at our brick, we actually see that we have a front view right now. And if that's not the view we want to start with, with our orthographic, uh, we can actually change that. And I am going to do that. I'm going to go up to our top view because that's going to help us a little bit more here. As well, we actually have the ability to change what we're seeing, whether we want a shaded solid object, which we will use, just not right here, or if we want something that's with hidden lines removed or hidden lines shown. Now, let me show you all of these. First of all, our scale right now is 5 to 1, which is uh, not necessarily what we want to do. I'm going to prop this up to 10 to 1 just to show this demonstration, and then we're going to change it down to something that works in our drawing. Obviously, you can click and move this block around. The other option you have is you can change the scale, and you'll notice that as I'm changing the scale, the scale factor down here is actually changing with it. So let's press OK. And I just want to see what that creates. Now this is with hidden lines removed. You'll notice that on the top face of this Lego brick, which is exactly what I would see if I had the top of these uh, top of these nubs here, this is what we would get. Now if I double click on this, I have the ability to add hidden lines. And now for any of you who have drawn the bottom of this, you know that there's a lot of stuff hidden underneath the Lego brick. This is where we can actually put those hidden lines in and actually basically demonstrate the bottom of it, removing one of our potential views for orthographic. Uh, and in this case, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to make a full Lego brick on this one, and I'm going to shrink it down so that it's going to fit nicely on our page. Probably about uh, yay large. And I'm actually, in, on second thought, I'm going to switch it back up to the uh, side view here. All right. Once we press OK, we will have created our base. Now, base is important. This one actually, believe it or not, is going to have hidden lines on it. Base is important because the base is going to give us our initial uh, initial piece to start with. Everything from here is just a projection of the base. So we're actually going to go to our projection button, and we're actually going to create two projections. I do this by clicking on the Lego brick and just projecting my side view out, clicking with the left mouse button. I go then go to the bottom, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the left click. Now, after that, you'll notice that if I float around in a kind of 45 degree angle view, I will get an isometric view. We don't want that yet. We're actually going to right click on this and we're going to click on create. That's actually going to create our side and side and top view, bottom view in this case. 
Now, the secret here is that we're trying to get enough information to actually show the viewer what they need to see. And in this case, we've gotten most all of that. One other projected view I really like to put in here, though, is an isometric view. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to click up in the top right-hand corner, and you'll notice that it creates this really nice isometric view. When I left-click and I right-click, I can create another object here. Now the reason I did this as a separate command is that I can actually modify this object independent of the other ones. In this case I really want a shaded view and you'll see why in a second. Now I get a Lego brick that looks like it's shaded. I'm starting to get IKEA instructions here. Nothing wrong with that. When I double click on this Lego brick I realize it's way too big so I'm actually going to scale this down. I'm probably going to scale this to about 7.5 to 1 and that's going to look about right on my drawing move it around just to make sure it's in the right spot. There's my grip point. All right, now this drawing right now shows somebody manufacturing this pretty clearly what they are looking at, what they're trying to make. Um, I've eliminated a lot of draw a lot of views that I won't necessarily need, but they will need to know the measurements, which is an important piece. Now, one thing, excuse me, that they can do is then go down into the title block here. And you'll notice that this is showing a lot of information already. It's showing who drew it, it's showing what date, uh, it's showing what the scale was, how many sheets there are. You'll notice that I've put one, all of this into one sheet. A lot of blueprints and a lot of diagrams are going to be way too complex for a single sheet, so you're going to break this out into multiple sheets, and there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, if you do find yourself needing a new sheet, you're welcome to click up here and submit multiple sheets for any project. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But the other thing that we do need is some annotations, or in this case, some dimensions to make this work. So if we go up to our Annotate tab here at the top, we actually have a whole bunch of options here. And the very first of which is we're actually going to put some text in here. Um, the first text being the title of this. Okay, I think I named this one Building Brick, so we're actually going to put in some text. I'm going to make it 0.24 inches. And this is going to give us a really good idea of exactly what we are, um, what we are working with here. So now I can actually go ahead with this title block. Now, when you get to the dimension tab, you'll notice that there's a whole pile of dimensioning options depending on what you're doing. You're in an introductory course. We don't need to go into all of these. The only ones I really need you to do is I need you to have some dimensions on here. And when you just put a general dimension, you're going to be able to click from line to line and you're going to be able to lay out a dimension. Now in this case you'll notice that number came out as 1.25. Uh, for some of you who are looking at this going, that's not my dimension on my drawing. I believe that I do have the settings for this set as uh, the settings for this set as imperial. Yours should be set to metric and if they're not, go into your tools. I'm just going to delete this dimension. I'm going to go to my tools and I'm actually going to go to my document settings. Document settings is going to allow you to change between imperial and metric. Now right now, we've got our default set to ANSI. In this case, we actually just want to change our, uh, fa our dimensions into ANSI millimeters. Let's apply that. Close. Let's go back to our annotate menu. Let's put our dimensions in here. You'll notice now that this is changed to 31.8. This is the dimensions you probably drew this in and probably the dimensions you want to produce it in. Once we've thrown a few more dimensions in here, we're going to start to get the idea of exactly what size this thing is. And this is going to let somebody produce it. You're going to run into the rectangles, and they're very easy. You go side to side, no problems at all. But you're also going to run into the circles. And the circles pose a bit of a problem because the information we need for a circle is the center point and the radius. And the radius isn't too hard because when we click on here and actually add our dimension, we actually get a, get the dimension that we want. So if we look in here, we actually get 2.6 on that for a diameter. Diameter works, radius works, they're both uh, somewhat interchangeable on this one. Okay. We also know that this is going to be a typical dimension, so we are actually able to put TYP right into the text box here. Notice that these arrows show up and they represent the number that is already, already in the drawing. If that dimension changes, so for some reason you change your drawing, it's going to change the dimension to match, which is really useful, especially if you're using parametric drawing and working on some more advanced stuff. Okay, I'm going to throw that in there, but one other thing we need to draw this circle is we actually need to know where the center point is. And the center point lines are all up here in the middle, and you've got some center line buttons, but the one that we really care about for these drawings, for the servo motor and for the Lego brick, is the center mark button. This is going to allow us to actually drop a center mark on this circle. That, conveniently, 
provides us a nice snap point to measure between so that we can actually identify where the centers of this circle are. 3.9 millimeters by 3.9 millimeters. If you don't have that, you may want to check the drawings again and make sure that you get one that, uh, that does match here. Now that being said, those are the basics of what you'll need for your technical drawing. Obviously your drawing will have a few more dimensions on it. You should try to endeavor to get all the dimensions you would need to produce this Lego brick. And um, I'll show you one more example because there is one more thing that we haven't touched on on this, and that is the idea of a center line bisector. And it, you may find it useful up at the top here. If I draw here, I do get a center line across the middle of this nub. That's going to allow me to take a dimension and actually measure to it if I need to. That's going to give me that same 3.9. Now obviously with orthographic drawing, I don't need redundant dimensions. I don't need 3.9 on both sides, but those are two ways of doing the exact same thing that's actually going to allow us to draw those pieces rather effectively. Now, at the end of the day, you've got this drawing, and you can go ahead and file Save As, and you can actually save this. I'm going to save this as Building Brick into my Documents folder. You should probably have a folder for this that is labeled um, Robotics CAD, or something along those lines, so that you can keep track of all of your files. Eventually, when you get a CADing a lot of things, you end up with files absolutely everywhere, and keeping them organized is a major, major part of your uh, both your skills as well as actually your assessment in this class, oddly. I'm going to save this as a .dwg file, and that's one of the files that we'd like you to submit. The other one we'd like you to submit is actually a PDF file. Now to do a PDF file, you're going to go File, Export, and this is going to start to look a lot like our work in AutoCAD in 2D. Once you click the Export PDF button, we're going to go back to RobotCAD, we're going to pick another good descriptive name here, and we're going to save it as a PDF file. Once we save there, we're going to end up with a PDF of this particular document and that's going to allow us to pull up a page that looks exactly like this one. I'm just going to go hop into my documents and grab that one just on my other screen here if you give me a moment. And I save that under Robotics CAD. So here's the folder that I found and you'll look right now that I've got some temporary files, uh, I've got some lock files, but what I importantly have is a drawing file and I have a PDF file. And when I pop this open, what I'm going to see is a flat sheet or a white sheet that looks exactly like what we just drew. Dimensions are on here, all of our drawings are on here, our title is on here. We know what we're dealing with at this point. Now, the other program you may have downloaded is Fusion 360, and I want to just take a second to explain the difference between these two because it is kind of important. A lot of you will end up in, with Inventor, a lot of you will end up with Fusion 360. There's nothing wrong with either method. Fusion 360 is it is kind of, if we're using the comparison, Inventor is kind of like your desktop Microsoft Word, whereas Fusion 360 is kind of like your Google Drive or Google Docs, where this, everything in Inventor lives on your computer. Traditionally, CAD companies or engineering companies that work with CAD have had a network system where, like at our school, you save to the network, all of your files live there, that way people can collaborate within the network. But with the cloud and the idea of putting things up on the internet, there was a bit of a shift. And so Autodesk actually created Fusion 360. Now, you'll notice that Fusion 360 looks a lot like Inventor. A lot of the tools are here. You'll look if you click the Create menu. A lot of the tools are exactly the same. It actually functions almost exactly the same as Fusion as Inventor, with the only difference being that this one has a very different user interface, it looks a little different, and most importantly, your whole file system exists off here on the left. And you'll notice that I've I'm actually in a folder right now called Classroom Resources, where I've actually assembled the servo motor for you. And I'm just very quickly going to walk through how to create the drawing for this one in Fusion 360 if this is the tool you decide you want to do. Now, again, not the Lego brick, but the servo, which would be our next assignment on this one. And you'll notice that this, like Inventor, has a browser, it has a way to put things together, and it saves in the cloud. This is really good. We use this with the robotics team all the time for actually collaborating on designs, because we can create one design, everybody can access the same design, and not have to keep swapping files back and forth. Now, like, uh, like Inventor on this one, we're going to go up to our file menu, and we're going to go New Drawing. And in this case, we're going to make a new drawing from this design. Each design, each object is their own thing, and we're given some options here. This, At this point, we're actually asked what units we want to work in. I do want to work in millimeters for this one. Okay, We're going to ask what paper size we want. I'm just going to keep the defaults on this one because it does work for this particular servo motor. It's a little bit funky to print on this one but uh, in a school setting, but that's okay. Now, what you're going to see, you're starting to see some of the actual tools that you actually saw on um, on Inventor. 
You'll notice that with all of these in Fusion, you can pull these drop-down menus to see all of the different things, including some more advanced dimensioning tools, and it immediately asks us, what do you want to start doing with this? And in this case, I want to draw this servo motor with a side view. I'm going to up this to about, I think, 4 to 1. Nah, we're going to go 3 to 1. Okay. There's no correct answer here when you're scaling and dimensioning things. You want to make the object as large as you can so that you can effectively see it, but you don't want to make it so large that nobody can see anything else on the page. We still have our base view. Uh, we're not going to use it for this right now. We're actually going to use our projected views in this case to throw the, um, I kind of want the top view and I kind of want the side view of my um, servo here. I want to right click and I want to press OK. Now in this case, I actually want to move these up and out of the way. And you'll notice the side view moves with it because it's going to try to keep these in line as best we can, but we'll have to move the top view separate of that. All right, now like the last one, we are going to put an isometric view on here. And if we double click on this, we would have the option to, for example, put this in as shaded. Uh, in this case, I'm going to create a brand new base. I'm actually going to throw a brand new base view in here to show you how this works. When I create the base view, its default orientation is the front of the model. That means we're looking right at it front on. But we have a lot of options here. In this case, I'm just going to put northeast isometric. It's one of my favorite versions of this. I'm again going to change the scale. Now, those are most of the actual tools that you're going to be using for this, for the intro class. Um, and it's going to give us this nice shaded in view of exactly what we're doing. Like Inventor, we're the, simply going to go to our dimension tools. We have a lot of options here, or we can just use the base dimension tool. And we can go ahead and throw, let's say, a uh, radius in here. Let's say we wanted to throw a corner to corner snap there. We wanted to throw a corner to corner snap here. And again, if we want to throw in things like a center mark, we have those tools right up at the top of our screen to throw a center mark in. Specifically, I'm going to zoom in on this one. Specifically, a center mark on where this circle starts. In this case, it's going to give us the ability to throw in an actual measurement from there to there and drag it out. Now, try not to overlap your measurements wherever possible. When you're done selecting something, usually right click and OK is the best way to go. Try not to overlap your dimensions. Like if I had this one, I would try to actually set this out here. And uh, that one's actually not bad now. That's going to give you some idea of how to dimension this thing. Now, another nice thing with it, Fusion is Fusion does put a lot of the titling stuff automatically in here. Um, it definitely will help you out in putting all of your drawings together. When you're done with this one, this one you can save as a Fusion file. It's very, it's not as useful to actually save these as PDFs because they live in the cloud, or sorry, as uh, DWGs because they live in the cloud, but PDFs are actually quite useful. So if you go over to your PDF button here, we actually have the ability to output as a PDF. When we click this, it's going to ask you, do you want to send all sheets? Now in this case, we only had one sheet. Uh, if we wanted more sheets on here, we could absolutely add more sheets uh, to this uh, particular drawing. I'm just going to uh, close my learning panel down so we get a little bit more space. And uh, if we had more sheets, we could absolutely do that. If we don't want to, though, we have the uh, we have the drawing we have right here, and we can actually um, we can actually go ahead and output this as a PDF. We can open it when it's done. It asks, do you want the current sheet, selected sheets, arranged? We only have one sheet, so we're good. And we do want to keep our line weights. That's going to keep different lines looking different from one another. Also, let us open it with other things. We're going to save this. And I'm just going to go into my documents. Uh, I have a folder in here called Robotics CAD. And we're going to call it Building Brick Fusion 360, just so it has a different file name than the previous Building Brick. And when we're all said and done with that, we should get a file that looks very similar to this and gives us everything we need to make the Building Brick, or the servo motor in this case. I named this Building Brick, didn't I? We're going to go back and change that because that's going to bother me otherwise. Press Output PDF, All Sheets. Let's not name this building brick. Let's name this servo Fusion 360. And let's go ahead and save that. And again, it will open this again to show us that yes, you've got it. Maybe I didn't check that one off. Anyways, that being said, here is the kind of drawing that we are looking for for your technical design credit for your technical design projects to show us that you understand the piece where you've created a 3D model, you've turned it into a 2D representation, and that you actually have the ability to show this to somebody and have them produce it. Let's say you took it down to a metal shop, maybe our aviation shop, and wanted to create something. This is a really important skill for you to have to communicate your engineering drawing. With well, that being said, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. We've got some tutorials, uh, live Q&As going on later today if they are of any use to you. And uh, other than that, 
enjoy uh, enjoy Fusion, enjoy Inventor. <laughs>